By special request, I'm going to show you guys how to use the Tough Workhorse Javelin Automatic Press, which also can be applied to those Freedom Presses out there. Coming up. Welcome back everybody. This is a little bit of a special request video. So let's dive right into this tutorial. All right, so with the control panel, we have our emergency stop. On our particular press, the Javelin, it does have the feature to double index. And what the double index feature will do is rotate the pallets two times. So it would rotate this pallet here and then would rotate it to the second station. What that will allow you to do is print two separate jobs at once. Or let's say, for instance, you want to change out your pallets to sleeves you could essentially, with the two job method, you could have one job here on print head number one, another job on print head number two. So whatever is on this, this first pallet, your, your loading station, this pallet here is considered your unloading station. So this would be job number two on head number two. And then this would be your, your second job, however you wanna kinda of look at that, but essentially it's gonna rotate the pallets twice, allowing you to print two separate jobs at once. This button here is to rest your squeegees either in the front or the rear location. For Plastisol, you wanna keep it to the rear. For water base, you wanna keep it to the front, so that way it stays in the flood position. Table up and table down will move the press up and down. Print on activates the print heads sample that's basically starting the press up and making it go through its sequence turning on and turning off each of the heads making it go all the way completely around the press to produce a sample now this is your auto start stop manual button when you're ready to start printing shirts you'll flip this button on and hold as soon as you flip this on within three seconds you want to hold the begin production button here what that will do is turn on each head in sequence, almost like the sample mode, but it will keep going and the press will continue to print shirts. Now, when you've loaded up your last shirt on your pallet and it swings underneath print head number one, you'll hit your end production button and it will turn the heads off in sequence as it goes around the press. And then your last t-shirt will stop here in the unloading position. These switches here are to activate your heads. You have either a single or double stroke. So you can just flip those up or down. In the center, it's not doing anything. The print head is not printing. These are your manual buttons. So when you're first setting up your jobs, you hit your manual button pertaining to whatever station you want it to do a, a test print. That's what these buttons are for and it has to be in the stop manual mode. Now these here are pretty much delay timers. The delay here is the amount of time it is delayed before the carousel or each station here will index. The flood is the amount of given time for the squeegee to flood the, the ink and for the table to come up. So it's a delay for the flood and the table to come up and that squeegee to flip. Print is a delay for how much print time you need. If you have a larger graphic, let's say you're working with white and you're not wanting to print it too fast, just so the ink will clear the mesh, you can turn this up or turn it down. And then we have our counter, which you can hold this button down to reset it, and then you have your power. When you turn your power button on, what will happen is your indexing block will turn on which locks this thing into position. However, you can still move it out of position, but this gets you all set up and in place so that way when you do table up and set things up and do your little test prints, it is lining up with these registration forks right here. Then of course you have your lamp for doing your registrations and all that, and you can move this to whatever position you would like it, either to one side or the other. This button here, you do not want to fool with a whole lot. You see I have mine taped off. This essentially will increase how fast or slow down how quickly the press will index and it does all its functions, basically. So this, we have our set a little bit of a slower speed so that way it's easier for one operator to print jobs. Moving on to our flashbacks, how this works is you have your heat 
which turns on your heat and your fans. The auto flash, this will activate the flash so that way it actually turns on and it will shuttle in and out. With our particular models of flashbacks, you have a print flash print setting, print print flash, print flash print flash. This is great if you're doing a, let's say a bright white print and you're just doing a one color. You can print it, it will flash it and we'll print it again and you're done. With the print print flash setting, let's say you're just doing a white base and you wanna make sure that that white base clears nicely. Print print flash will make sure that your mesh clears quite nicely and then it will flash it. So that way it will go on to the next station and you can do your overprint color. Print flash, print flash. Let's say you have a situation where you're doing six colors but you need a bright white base. You can use this feature and it will print, flash it, print it again and flash it again so that way you can do your overprint colors on top of it. And with your print flash print setting or your print print flash, your print flash print flash, you have to have it in double mode. If you just have it in single mode, say for example you have it on the print print flash setting, it's just going to print once and then flash it. So keep in mind you have to have it in the double setting in order for the squeegee to actually print twice. Next thing, we have our table up switch here, or excuse me, table up, table down. It's got a couple settings. Ours is set to table up, so that way when the table is up, the flash will come out and flash the ink or whatever, whatever you're needing to flash. Now with it on table down, it will actually flash while the table is down. So let's say you have this on station number two, just for the sake of productivity, you could have it on station number two over there. Do your white base on the, the first station. Once it comes over to the second station, it will flash it while it's at that station rather than waiting for the flash to flash it on that same station. It, what it does essentially is increases how quickly you can produce shirts. Next thing we have is we have the extend and the retract control flow knobs here. If you turn this counterclockwise, it will make it extend or come back however fast you want it to do. Generally, from what I've seen and how we've got our setup, is we'll have it extend quicker and retract slower. The reason we have it set that way is if we have it come out slow and then pull back really fast, it just tends to just kind of want to kind of clunk back. But you can kind of set it towards where it evenly flows both ways. We've played around with it and what we found is having the extend come out faster and then come back slower tends to be a little easier on the flashback and quicker. To adjust the length of the stroke on your flashback, you have to adjust this little lever here that essentially triggers this switch right here on your flashback. And you adjust that by loosening up that screw and you can slide it up and down this rail. Moving on to the heads, we have the print flow control and then the flood. And if you turn these things counterclockwise, it will increase how fast it prints or floods. So you can play with those to get the ideal setting for you. And then we have the rear and front screen clamps. Generally, when you're registering up a job, you can turn both these on once you feel you have everything registered. If you do find that you need to make some micro adjustments, turn the rear off and then make your adjustments here on your micro registrations up front. And then once you got it all in place, turn your, ah, turn your screen clamp back on. Up next, we have the stroke length adjustment knob here. You can loosen this knob and move it forward or backward in order to get the stroke length that you need. No sense in, in making it do a full stroke if you're only doing a small little left chest print or something along those lines. We do have the micro registration here. These are your clamp knobs and then these knobs, this left knob and the right knob will either make the screen go up and down and then this is your X axis so that way you can either move your screen to the left or to the right and then kind of as I was saying this will make it go 
up or down either direction. So if you need the whole thing to move up and down, you'll just move both those knobs at the same time. And coming around to the rear of the press, if you do have designs that are a little larger and you need to move the back of it on the x-axis sideways, you either turn it to the right or left, clockwise, counterclockwise, in order to move it. Uh, if, if you turn it clockwise, it's going to move it to the left. If you turn it counterclockwise, it's going to move it to the right. What I like to do with my screens is I do like to put a piece of tape down at the bottom where the squeegee will rest because when it is flooding, it sometimes can push down, depending on how it's set up, it can press this down onto the pallet sometimes and when you're getting started, depending on how tacky your pallets are, the emulsion can touch the, the pallets and it can make it stick and pull some of that emulsion off. So one of the ways I go about avoiding that is putting some tape down so that way it's not pulling any emulsion off and then I don't end up seeing color streaks on my print. Which you can see that lovely example right here where I did forget to put some tape on the bottom of the screen and some of the emulsion came off onto the palette. Last but not least, something that one of the most important parts here uh, are the levers on your print head itself with your squeegee style. This front one here is your actual print angle. This one here is your flood angle. And then this one drops the carriage up and down. I'll show you here in a moment how this works but that's what these knobs are for. And then this is your, your pressure knob. And I'm about to dive into that just as soon as we get some screen set up and start running off this job. Thanks for tuning in. Next video, we'll show you how to set up a five color spot process job on the automatic and show you how to use the press basically. So we'll see you guys in the next video.